What is going on guys and welcome back to another very exciting video. In this video we are going to be talking about SoFi technologies and we have an article that talks about why SoFi is an easy double up. So we're going to go over all the points that are presented in that article and I'm going to give my opinion for and against them. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video. If you do like the video make sure you drop a like down below and if you want to see more videos like this one make sure you hit that sub button. Let's start off by taking a look at SoFi's chart. We can see the stock is up 1% here today but that really doesn't tell the full story. The stock actually opened around $6 and ran down almost 4%. We can see 3.88% move downward. And from these lows here of the day, the stock actually turned around and moved back up around 2.5% to close for the day around 1.02% move up. And if we look at the last five days, we can see that the stock has actually moved 4% and still a lot of volatility over these last few days in the upward and downward direction and really kind of trading sideways ever since Monday. If we look at the last month, the stock is up around 8.5%. If we look at the last six months, again, we see a lot of volatility in the stock. We can see late December, early January, that the stock really began to run up and ran from the $4.40 mark all the way up to around $7.72. And then after that, we had the banking crisis. And from there, the stock moved down around 32% to this low here just around a month ago of $5.22. Since then, then the stock appears to be correcting a little bit and itching up. I really don't expect a lot of large upward moves until potentially the earnings announcement here in a month or so. With that, let's go ahead and jump into the article. It's titled, Why SoFi Stock is an Easy Double From Here. It was published two days ago by David Modell, an investor place contributor. One of the points that this article brings up is that SoFi Technologies is far different than these banks that we have seen recently fail. Specifically, we're talking about SVB Financial and then also Signature Bank. When you look at their financial and how the bank was set up to take in new deposits and basically distribute that money into bonds, you see that there was not very much diversification. These banks were basically taking all of their new deposits and putting them into US government bonds at a very bad time in the market. And when the bonds started to go down in price, basically that put them into a very tough situation. When we're looking at SoFi Technologies, they have a lot more diverse business model. And you can see this diversification immediately once you go on their website. So they offer personal personal loans, banking, which banking is both their checking and savings accounts. Then they have credit score and insights. They offer private student loans, student loan refinancing, investing, mortgage loans, credit card, insurance, and then also auto loan refinancing. So mortgage loans, this is actually new and we'll talk about it more here in a second. But basically you can look at all these different sectors and if any one of these sectors is doing poorly, then oftentimes a different sector may make up for some of that poor growth that we're seeing. And the interesting thing to keep in mind when you're talking about SoFi is it is still a growth based company. It still has a tremendous amount of growth. So they're not diversifying away because they're lacking in growth. They're basically diversifying while they are growing at a huge rate. And that is important to keep in mind because you'll often see businesses where their growth will fall and they'll feel like they need to bring in another business. Let's say they, their growth in their banking sector falls. So they feel like they need to buy a mortgage company and bring it in to reaccelerate their growth. That is not the same thing. And that is not what's going on with SoFi. They are still growing at a fast pace, even though they have all these basically diversified different sectors. So as I mentioned there, mortgage lending is something that SoFi is trying to expand. It's one of their divisions that they had built out, but they are basically trying to grow it at a faster pace. And one of the ways that they are doing that is Windham Capital. So they actually acquired this company just a few weeks ago to kind of help grow that side of their business. So I tried to look up Windham Capital Mortgage's website, and actually you can't get to it right now. And we'll get into that here here in a second, but Windhelm was actually acquired on April 3rd of 2023 by SoFi. And unlike a number of other lenders that use online technology, Windhelm Capital processes, underwrites, closes, and funds all of its loans internally. So that is important to keep in mind. Basically, that'll help their margins overall because they aren't putting out to third parties some of these processes to complete and then having to pay a premium on top of it. They're doing all of this internally. The other thing to note is that they are licensed in over 50% of the United States. States. So here you can see a list of the states that they're actually licensed in. And that again allows SoFi to access a much larger customer base. If you go to your search bar and type in windhamcapital.com, it actually takes you to this website right here, which is SoFi Technology. So they have already integrated Windham's technology into their existing website. And we could see a little bit of that here at the top. So Windham Capital has joined SoFi Mortgage, view your loan portal. So there's already a way for existing loans that Windham wrote before the acquisition 
acquisition for those people to go in and actually access those loans and pay them off. Another thing that SoFi has done to kind of differentiate itself from these other banks that we have seen fail is it now offers up to $2 million worth of FDIC insurance per customer account. Oftentimes what you'll see these banks do is basically they'll split your account into you know a number of different accounts. So the FDIC looks at it and says, okay, instead of having one account with $250,000 in it, you now have four accounts that have $250,000 in it. So you're insured up to a million dollars. So basically now SoFi would be looking at eight accounts for a customer that has $2 million in their bank account and the FDIC will see it as eight different accounts. So they'll insure all of it. And that's really the difference between a lot of these banks because a lot of these other banks will only insure up to 250,000 because that's what FDIC insurance actually offers up to. But what this does is this allows SoFi to basically keep customers and attract new customers that have slightly higher net worths to put their money and feel safe with their money at SoFi. So what does all of that mean for SoFi stock price? We can see here that this article actually has a target of $22 per share on SoFi Technologies. In my opinion, $22 is probably out of the range right now for a price target. I don't think in the next year they will get to the $22 share price. I think a lot would need to change. I think we need to see interest rates come down and I think we need investors to really look at growth companies again and see that they are worth a premium. And that would get us to that $22 mark. But right now, investors are looking for companies that are profitable. And that is where SoFi needs to get to, to really see the stock double up. We could see here that NASDAQ.com actually has three price targets. So they have the low price target of $6.50, which is still above the current stock price. Then you have the average price target of $8.20. Definitely, I think that is reasonable. And a high price target of $10, which I also think is reasonable. I think the stock could easily get there. If we see SoFi get to a profitable state by the end of the year, I definitely think it could get up to $10. It just depends on how profitable they get. And then if they achieve more than investors are thinking that they're going to get to, I think they could get to a double up, which would be that $12 mark. With all that said, I am an investor in SoFi. I do like the company for the long term. I think that they have a lot going for them, and I think they can get to a profitable state by the end of the year, which will help them grow their investor base. I think investors will get more interested in the company company as they get more profitable and potentially even lean down as the market is kind of growing and looking for companies that are leaner and more efficient with how they spend their money. So that is all my opinion. Keep in mind, do not buy a company just because some random guy on YouTube talked about it. Make sure you are doing your own research and finding companies that fit your portfolio, your time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Those are all important factors to consider when you're making an investment. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day.